Good morning, everybody, and welcome this morning to Community. So glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. Why don't you join me in standing, and let's begin by singing page 195, or look up on the screen there. Glory to his name, and we'll sing all four verses here now. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of blood. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life, glory to his name. Wake up now, sing on the second. I am so wondrously saved from sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There at my heart was the blood of mine, glory to his name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered him. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of mine. Glory to his On the last now. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was a part of mine. Glory to him. How many of you this morning are thankful for Jesus? Say amen. I tell you, I love this next song, Low in the Grave He Lay. We sing it a lot at Easter, but it's a great song, and we're going to sing it this morning. Christ arose, sing with me now. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with saints. Here we go. He arose. 
What a beautiful story. We're going to sing one more here. I love to tell the story, page 145. Or look on the screen, first, second, and last. Now, here we go. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know tis true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story. wonderful morning. What a great song. I love to hear you sing. I love to hear you sing when you're singing. And that was a great job. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a fall day in Florida. We walked out this morning and my daughter said, what's this? What's this? What's wrong? And it's actually comfortable to walk outside. So ladies, I hope you're excited. You get to find your boots and sweaters and jackets and all that good stuff. And the rest of us we're like, wow, this is what the rest of the country has been feeling for two months. Amen. And we're so thrilled you're here. What a great day. Uh, I was just down in a junior church and met a little boy. And he's so excited to be here this morning. And I wish we had that kind of excitement about the house of God as these kids do. Now, if you want me to give you candy, that'll help. I'll do it. Amen. But uh, a little boy named Jordan, I just met. I think his mom is here. Elizabeth, if she's here somewhere. Elizabeth, good to meet you. I just met your son. What a thrill to have him this morning and you here as well. And, and others, if this is your first time or first time in a long time, would you slip your hand up and we want you to just get a visitor packet. These guys, good to have you, sir, and called family here. God bless you. And Larry, good to see you. Wow, what a blessing. Praise the Lord. Larry has, uh, uh, Larry has been down for the count on multiple occasions, but the ref keeps giving him another chance. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord, he's doing great. So he is here this morning, and uh, we just uh, never, never, never give up on the Lord. What a privilege to see him. And I went to visit him in the nursing home the other day, and I went in, it was beautiful, come out, and it was hurricane force flood winds, and I had to swim back to my car. But what a blessing. And uh, we're through. I got some guests here today as well. I've got uh, three friends of mine, dear, dear close friends, Eric and Tammy Wells from Groves, Texas, and uh, Lori Bowling is here from uh, Detroit, Michigan. And I remember a couple weeks ago, I offended all of you Michiganders because I said, can any good thing come out of Detroit? And I said like 75 South. Well, Lori Bowling came out of Detroit, so that's a blessing. 
And uh, Christy immediately posted on my wall, said, Preacher, that was a good sermon, except for that one remark right there. So I, I'm sorry for all of you Michiganders that I offended, but uh, that's why you're here in the winter. Just remember that. Amen. Uh, also, it's a, what a blessing to see Deb Newmeyer here today. And I've been at the top of our prayer list. And, uh, just uh, looks great today and good, good to see her. So praise the Lord. I want you to pray. Uh, Bob and Karen Daniels, one of our sweet families. Uh, Bob, one of our bus drivers. They, they lead our food bank ministry. Karen sings in the choir. Her dad passed away at 3 a.m. this morning. So let's pray for the Daniels. And uh, love the Lord is a soldier of the cross. And uh, just pray for that family, uh, if you would. Also others, Brother Wally Worley is going in, getting ready for surgery. And Wally's here this morning. But uh, found out a diagnosis this week. And so we're just lifting him up in prayer. And I believe the Lord's going to do great things for Brother Wally. So you pray for Wally and Pat and the girls. And uh, we're just praying for God's hand to be upon him. And uh, we rejoice over that. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Without question, the cross, the risen Savior, the old, old story. We have so many names for it. But Lord, we love to tell it. Lord, it is the greatest news that man has ever heard that God in heaven loved him so much that he'd send a precious son, Jesus, to this cross to die, be buried, and rise again for the sin of mankind to have hope in heaven. Lord, the message of sin is a grievous message, but the message of grace, Lord, liberates our soul. God, help us today to tell the old, old story in sermon and song, testimony. Lord, may we encourage one another, lift up one another. We praise you for all your goodness. Lord Jesus, I pray you'd be with those that are most troubled this morning. Uh, my heart is uh, heavy for Bob and Karen. We lift them up. And Lord, we love Wally and Pat. They're so dear to us personally, as well as our church family. And Lord, we just lift them up. And God, all others that have great burdens in these, may we find that burdens are lifted at Calvary this morning. Bless today, this day that you've given us, that we might worship you freely. Bless our country, our leadership. And Lord, we pray that today would be a good day in the house of our God. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Listen now as the choir sings this morning.
Thank you. Very true. The, the darkest night. Just hold on. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. And, uh, you know, we look around. Our world is certainly in a mess. You know what the Bible tells you to do when your world looks like it's in a mess? Lift up your eyes, your redemption draweth nigh. For the believer, as bad as it gets, it's a promise that things are about to get better. Amen. Amen. Remember the old time preacher used to say, business is about to pick up because Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Let's do this. Let's all stand together. We have a brand new um, addition this morning. Genesis Smith is here. Uh, let's stand together. You're fine. And uh, Genesis is here at Brook and Brandon with all new babies. Look, don't touch. Good to see you this morning. Find somebody you haven't said hello to. Shake hands. Fellowship. God bless you. We're glad you're here. As you're making your way back to your seat there, let's pick up on this first verse. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, mansion over the hilltop there on the first verse. Here we go. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold, but in that city. Where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver light. Sing it out. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow. And someday yonder, we will never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Though often tempted, tormented and tested, and like the prophet, my pillow was stone, and though I find him. No permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me a mansion my own. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop and land where we'll never grow. And someday yonder we will never more wander, but walk on streets that are pure. Sing that last, sing it out. Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged, I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim. In search of a city, I want a mansion, a harp and a crown. Sing it out now. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow. And someday yonder, 
never more wander, but walk on streets that are pure as gold. Well, as we sing this next song, we just sang about heaven, and aren't you thankful that we trust in a God who's faithful to get us there? Let's sing this song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. We'll sing the first, the second, and the third all together now. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness. To thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. On this last now, pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is Lord, unto me. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Take your Bible this morning. Find the book of Acts, chapter number 2. Acts, chapter number 2. If you use an old Schofield reference Bible, page 1152. Acts, chapter number 2. We've looked three weeks now. This is our third week. What our church needs, and we said in the first week, our church needs to understand our purpose. That's to be witnesses to the lost and dying of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We exist to win people to Jesus Christ and to teach them to follow Christ. Number two, we said last week we need to understand our place or the circumstances, the situations we're in. God placed us there for a reason. We're here for a reason. Don't understand that. Don't always realize exactly what God is doing when God is doing it. But God is doing a work and we're part of that, and we want to be part of what God is doing, therefore we want to be in the right place. Now, this morning I want to look at understanding our pattern, or why we do what it is we do here in the local church. And uh, I want you to think about that as we look at Acts chapter 2. Now understand, Christ established the church when He was with His disciples. The Holy Spirit empowered the church, and this is what's going on here in the Acts of the Apostles, or the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul comes along and explains the church in the epistles. And he gives us a clarification. Now, here in the book of Acts, as the Holy Spirit is empowering the church, you find the church is really exploding uh, in growth. 
Now, the book of Acts is a transitional book. It's a book where we see a lot of things that are uh, taking from the old to the new covenant. It's kind of that transitional approach. And we don't take all of the book of Acts as far as some of the things going on here were transitional. They were sign gifts. They were parts of the transition. But you do find the pattern established. Now, there is a law of prime mention in the Bible. The law of prime mention is where you see something for the first time that is setting the standard or the pattern for most of the other times. And here we find the first big evangelistic explosion, the first big growth of the church. And so I want to look at verses 40 down through verse 47 together this morning and to read these. Uh, and then I want to show you, hopefully, we'll get uh, some of this. Well, I know we don't, I probably don't think we'll get all of it in this morning, but we'll get a good part of it. Uh, verse number uh, 41, then, let's begin there, Acts 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. The same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, sold their possessions and goods, and parted to them to all men as every man had need. Now that's just one example there of what happened in the book of Acts that we don't do now. We don't live communally as far as selling all that we have and giving away to each other. Now, if you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, if you want to give all you have, and we'll, we'll be a part of that, but we're not going to reciprocate. Amen. But uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's, they, they thought the Lord was coming right back, and so they were just getting ready to go, and, and uh, Paul had to come along and explain, oh, we've got to work, and so on and so forth. Now, verse number uh, 44, And all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods, Parted, to, uh, parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. Now look at it. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, so much confusion in our modern world about church. We are confused people, especially the American brand or the Western brand of Christianity is very confused about what a church is and what a church is supposed to be and what a church is supposed to be doing and why I'm supposed to be a part of a church and why God has established a church. <clears throat> and so all of those things, we, we are confused at best when it comes to what the local church is supposed to be in 2014. Oh, Brother Stansel, the times have changed. We need to be a 21st century church. Let me submit this to you. We need to be a first century church in the 21st century. This idea of trying to be what the culture is is foolish because the culture is always shifting. The culture is always changing. Let's be a first century church in the 21st century. Now, I, I would love to explain that. I can't. There's no way time would permit all of what I want to say. But let's ask the Lord to help us. Lord, I have so much to say. There's so much that needs to be said. Lord, we, we are not against 21st century means. We thank you for technology. We thank you for automation. We thank you for all the things that we have to make the gospel go farther and do more. However, Lord, let us never change the method let us never change the message. Lord, it's still a first century message with a first century method, but using the means we have in the 21st century. Bless this, your people, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You listen as Lori sings. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in paths that I must trod. I have no fear when Jesus walks beside me for I'm sheltered in the arms of God so let the storms 
clouds rage high, the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not of earth shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Soon I shall hear the call from heaven's portals. Come home, my child, it's the last mile you must trod. I'll fall asleep and wake in God's dear heaven, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and none of earth shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Yes, I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Amen. Wonderful, Lord. Thank you. Boy, I was, uh, I was enjoying that. That was a blessing. And what I love about those songs that are considered familiar songs is so many of you were just singing along with that and the Lord was ministering to us. That's, that's, a, help, that's a help. It's a blessing. Uh, I'm sheltered regardless of the storm. Amen? I like it. Thank you, Ms. Lloyd. Uh, I met some folks here from Mississippi. They just moved from Mississippi. Uh, got two words for them, hotty toddy. Amen? And uh, it, it was a great day. If you're Mississippian, I, we have one other Mississippian over here in the special section right there. And uh, they, uh, they had the greatest day in Mississippi history yesterday because Mississippi State thumped Texas A&M and Ole Miss thumped Alabama. Not necessarily thumped, but beat them. And uh, so, man, if you're some Mississippi today, you ought to be, ought to be like having a flag and running around and... Whatever y'all say, I know it's hotty toddy. I have no idea what that is, but I, I, I appreciate our Mississippians here. God bless you. You deserve one day after all y'all been through. Amen. So praise the Lord. And uh, it's so good to see each of you here today. What about, it, it's still, I'm still getting used to the new seating. Uh, and like I look down here and Ray and Rover on the front dead center. That, that scares me to death, man. Uh, I, I'm used to you being where you're supposed to be, but y'all are kind of figuring out where your new seats are going to be. So it's a little bit weird to kind of get used to everything. Uh, Y'all look at me every week. I don't change, uh, but where I just get better looking. Amen. But anyway, uh, but uh, where y'all, like, uh, good to see you, by the way, Chip. God bless you. Good to have you here today as well. Others of you, you're moving around. Find a place and get Baptist, all right? Just sit right there because uh, Baptists have the same seat. That's where the Lord's going to rapture you from is right there. So please, good to see our friends from Canada back. Praise the Lord. Our snowbirds are sliding back in. God bless you, folks. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, good. All right, look at Acts chapter 2. The church is misunderstood so much, and much of it has to do with uh, when the Bible speaks of church, is it speaking of the entire body of Christ, or is it speaking of the local assembly? Now, I want to shock you a little bit, if you haven't studied this, to be uh, clear with you. When you find the word church in the New Testament, you're going to find that the vast majority, out of about 117 times, 100 plus of those are speaking to local New Testament bodies. 
So we're not just talking about those of us who are saved. Now, I thank the Lord for every person that's called on Jesus Christ as Savior. I pray that whether, whether you're Baptist or whether you're Southern Baptist or whether you're Northern Baptist or General Association or regular Baptist, American, you get the point, there's a lot of Baptists, or whether you're Methodist or, or whether you're whatever you are, the old Nazarene, whenever you trust Christ, that was a good day in your life. Amen. Amen. And uh, you're, you're a lot of folks are going to go to heaven and uh, they're going to be from different stripes and different cultures and different denominations. And you heard about the Baptists that died and went to heaven. And, and St. Peter, for some reason, is always the, the tour host when you get to heaven. So Peter's walking him around and, and, and he's showing him all these different great rooms. And he goes to the first room, man, and I mean, it is loud. I mean, it is shouting. It is exciting. It is getting big. And I mean... Peter goes uh, to the young man that's standing there. He said, what do you think about this? He said, wow, what room is this? He said, man, this is all those that got old-time religion. He said, this is folks that love to shout and sing and praise God. This is where they come. He said, oh. He goes on down to another great room, and, and Peter opens the door, and very quiet, very somber. There's a man up there kind of leading worship. It's very, very spiritual, very intense. He said, what? Well, shh. This is those that come from the high church background. This is from those who, who like form in their worship. He said, we observe here. This is their group. He comes to another door, and, and it was boarded up and taped up. and I mean, had do not enter, do not disturb. He said, what? No, shh. That's the Baptist room. They think they're the only ones here. But the truth is, we're going to get to heaven and you're going to say, wow, I didn't know you were coming. And then we're going to say, wow, I thought some others were coming that didn't make the trip. Amen. But salvation is when a person trusts Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And they get born into the family of God. They get adopted in. They get married in. They get in. Praise God. But... When the Bible talks about the church in the New Testament, he's not talking specifically or primarily even about that great body of believers. When he talks to churches, he's talking to local assemblies of believers who meet in a local setting. And the local church is God's plan for this age to carry out his work and mission. The local church is God's place to develop, to mentor, to grow believers, to do the work God has called them to do in this present age. Now, we live in a place, and let me hasten quickly because I have a lot to say, and I realize now we're never going to get where I want to go. But there's a lot today about uh, churches and about different types of churches. And people say, preacher, I don't have to go to church because of the internet. I can stay home or I can go uh, out of town and, and I can be on a golf course watching on my phone and I can just love the Lord just like I'm there. Let me just explain that to you. No, you can't. Amen. God's plan is for the local assembly together. You can't do that at TV. You can't do that on the internet. You can't do that on the radio. Well, I belong to such and such radio church. Wonderful when you get sick and go to the hospital, let radio preacher come visit you. Let TV preacher come see you. Well, preacher, I go to a church, and we have a main church, and then a lot of multi-site churches. And by the way, we've prayed about all this. If this is the Lord's will for us right now, it's certainly not. But, but again, that is very impersonal in that you have a sermon from a television. Now, I like the gathering part, but there's something about the assembling together of the local church that God ordained for the work of the ministry. Say, preacher, church doesn't need to be small, church doesn't need to be big. Churches need to be whatever God adds to that local assembly. Some churches are going to be bigger because of where they are. Some churches are going to be smaller because of where they are. Some churches are going to be smaller because the pastor has other responsibilities. Some churches, the pastor can handle more. It's not about the size. It's not about any of those things. It's about what God wants for our local assembly. And listen, I want you to understand this, and I want you to get this way down deep in your heart. I love other people, but I don't care for them like I care for Community Bible Baptist Church. Amen. I love other churches. I love other movements. I love other places. I love other people. But this 
is the place where God has placed me. And, and we didn't necessarily want to come to this place, but once we made it, God made it clear this was his place for us, this is where God put us, this is where God placed us, and this is where we're to stay and to be busy at until God removes us. Amen. Oh, preacher, you're the preacher, that's right. And you're the people, and that's right. God puts people in local assemblies just like he puts pastors in local assemblies because it's where God wants you to be. This is where God expects you to be. This is where God wants you to get involved so that you can become what God wants you to be for the work in the ministry that he's called you to do. Now let me quickly move through this and I want to give you as much as I can, as quickly as I can. Number one, the polity, polity, the structure, the polity of a Bible-believing church. Now preacher, there's a hundred types of church polity we have this group and that group and we have denominational polity listen all of that doesn't come from the scripture the scripture gives us the polity of the local church first of all who is the cornerstone of the church well i'll tell you that's christ and christ alone the bible says in the book of colossians chapter 1 verse 18 and he christ is the head of the body of the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things listen he might have preeminence Christ the head of our church preacher where do you get your instructions from Christ the head of our church preacher who formed your church Christ the head of our church preacher who do you answer to Christ the head of our church there is no other head than the headship the lordship of Christ that that immediately does away with all of this human intervention we got to check on what the denominational bishop says we got to check on what the board says we got to check on what no we have to check on what the bible says well we got to answer to the priest or to the bishop or to the pope no we answer to the one who died was buried and rose again if you didn't die if you weren't buried and you didn't rise again we don't answer to you because you are not the preeminent one you are not the risen one Christ is the head of every local assembly that's a Bible local assembly he is the cornerstone of the church preacher do you care what they're doing down the road don't care preacher does it matter what the what their vote was doesn't matter we don't vote on things because Christ already determined things why are we voting on what Christ has already put in place? They're arguing today over everything in the world, and Christ has already explained it in his guidebook and said, follow this, don't get off this. Where does men get in trouble when they lead to their own way, and every time a man leads to his own way, he ends up in destruction? The church gets off the Bible, starts, starts getting man's idea. Well, we think this, we think that, we feel this, we feel that. I don't care what you think, I don't care what you feel. What does God say? Amen. We got to vote on that, preacher. No, we don't have to vote on that. God's already determined that. Number one, we have the cornerstone, the church. The Word of God has clearly lift, uh, given us the fact that Christ died for the church. Christ loves the church. Christ gave himself for the church. It's Christ's church. My friend Johnny Pope changed the name of his church because he was moving from one area to another. And boy, when he named his church, when he renamed his church there in Houston, people got angry because he, he didn't name it like such and such Baptist church. He named it Christ Church Baptist Fellowship. Christ Church Baptist Fellowship. And I mean, you would have thought he had committed apostasy it was a big deal because he didn't name it the Houston Baptist Church or whatever it was and Johnny said well first of all it's Christ Church and we're Baptist and we fellowship you got a problem with that not your church not my church not our church Christ Church in fact if you want to study this out when you get to the people's church in the Bible, you've gotten to the Laodicean church. The church that submits to the will of the people, not the word of the Lord. And when you get to a church that submits to the will of the people, you've got a messed up church. Because the will of the people is fickle and fleshly 
and going to lead you astray. Listen, the will of the people will lead you away. The word of the Lord keeps you straight. We don't need to change one thing. What started right here in Acts chapter 2, what started with Jesus and his disciples, what continued here through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is what Christ established, and that is a church where he is the cornerstone. He died, he was buried, he rose again. It is all about him. Now, number one, we find the polity, the head of the church, the cornerstone of the church. Number two, the caretaker of the church. Take your Bibles, please, and we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 5. And we're going to come back to our text, so hold your place there. 1 Peter chapter 5. He's the cornerstone, but he leaves us with a caretaker. Now, in your Bible, you're going to find the word elder, bishop, shepherd, pastor, preacher, teacher, all these different terms. But these are terms that are used interchangeably to describe the work of the pastor. Now, are we in 1 Peter chapter 5? Look at verse number 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder. Now, Peter is writing and he's explaining some things to the other pastors. And by the way, let me just say this, that Paul, writing to young Titus, talked about his leadership role and he said, let no man despise your youth. Spiritual maturity has very little to do with physical age. There can be some very young men. In fact, you go back and study our, our history as far as our faith goes. Some of the greatest works of God were done by men under the age of 30. Their lives were completed and their death before 40. You say, why? Because spiritual maturity is your desire to follow God, not the age in which you live. So Peter writes to the church, he says, And a witness of the suffering of Christ, verse 1, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed, Verse 2, feed the flock of God which is among you. The preacher, the pastor, the overseer, the caretaker, his number one responsibility, his number one principal responsibility is to teach and preach the Word of God. To teach and preach the Word of God. Say, prove this to me, Pastor. Well, we run ahead four chapters, and we'll look at this several times in the next couple of weeks. But in Acts chapter 6, there comes a problem of administration where we have uh, some men that uh, are coming to the pastors, those that are gathered there. They say, man, the widows and the orphans are being neglected with their daily ministration. Uh, by the way, that's another principle that we're to care for, the widows and orphans. He says, we've got to take care of them. By the way, they were talking about mostly the Greek families the Greek families and so the uh, the the men were gathered there they come with this problem and uh, they said now wait a minute we, we we can't leave the study of the word and prayer for table setting for serving to choose you choose seven men choose seven men that are full of faith in the Holy Ghost and let them do that we must give ourselves to prayer and study of the Word of God now listen I love the visitation in fact I visited I go I try to see but my, mo my most important responsibility is when I open the Word of God, I have something to give you. Amen. That's right. Sunday morning, that's Sunday night, that's Wednesday night, that's tomorrow in the morning when I teach my young men, uh, that's Thursday night when I teach on the times that I teach over there, that's my special meetings. My job is so that when you come in, the Word of God is presented to you that the Spirit of God can take the Word of God and affect your life. We've got to the place where pastors are more like CEOs and organize. Listen, I'm not called to organize. I'm called, 2 Timothy chapter 2, preach the word. Amen. Preach the word. In season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering doctrine. To preach the word of God. And so it is very important to me that you understand that my first responsibility is to preach the word of God. Now, I want to do everything else, but before I can do anything else, I must prepare myself to preach the word of God. Number two, as I preach the word of God, I am responsible to lead the church of God. Look at verse number uh, two again. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. God puts a pastor in a church to take the oversight. Now that word is very simple. It means to oversee to oversee, to, to make sure that the church is moving toward the will of God, in the will of God, serving the people of God, serving the community around, and the church is led by a pastor. Now, someone said this years ago, I thought it was good, and I always mess it up because it's confusing, but a pastor cannot be a thermometer, a pastor must be a thermostat. A thermometer says, what does the people want? 
A thermostat says, what do the people need? The people don't like that. The Word of God said the people need that. Not a hireling. Don't do it for filthy lucre or money's sake. Not a chaplain. A lot of, a lot of churches, we want a chaplain. To shake our hand, marry our children, bury our dead, be sweet, glad hand, do all the political things. Listen, God didn't call the pastor to be a chaplain. He called him to be an overseer, to set the tone, to lead the church. Listen, God, some of you, you don't like this statement, but I'm going to give it to you because you need to. God uses men. God uses men. God doesn't use buildings. God doesn't use groups. God uses men to lead men. My job is to lead the church of God. My job is to help you. My job is to preach to you. My job is to help you be accountable to one another. My job is to help you to follow and find the will of God for your life. Hey, I cannot just come in and say, oh, what does group A want? Okay, the seniors want this and the juniors want this. And the, I can't do that. I have to preach and teach and lead for what God wants, not what the people want. And that's the overseer's job. Say, preacher, do you like that? I don't really. There are many days that I would like to be the senior citizens director of our church. I would like somebody else to be the pastor, and I would like to lead the seniors ministry. On Tuesday, we will go to the Chick-fil-A breakfast club, and we will eat the Chick-fil-A sandwich, and we will drink the Chick-fil-A coffee because it's much better than what they used to serve, and we will eat the little potato rounds that come like manna from heaven, and we will open the Bible and pray, and then we will eat another Chick-fil-A sandwich because it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. And then as the leader of the senior citizen ministry, I will go and I will sit with little old widow ladies at home, and they will make me coffee and little cakes to eat. And we will talk about the good old days, and we will talk about bunions and hernias, and we will talk about anything they want to talk about. But while we're talking about it, we will drink coffee and eat cake. And then on Thursday night, we will gather for the potluck. And you will bring in more food, and I will eat more food. And then we will go to the activity, and we will stop at Cracker Barrel because all God's little children go to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> See, teen ministry, Taco Bell, seniors ministry, Cracker Barrel, it's a no-brainer. And then I will go, and unfortunately, we will go and visit the funeral home, and I will help you there, and I will help you there. But I don't care about the nursery, and I don't care about the bus route, and I don't care about the missions, and I don't care about the finance. All I care about is you and Cracker Barrel. But see, I can't just focus on the seniors. I got 50, 60 teenagers that I got to make sure they're going forward. Then I had 205 bus kids that come in here Sunday, uh, Wednesday night, say amen right there, by the way. Amen. We had 205 on the bus Wednesday night. And we got to make sure they got rooms and they got places. Then I got master club kids. Then I got nursery kids. Then I got missionary good men that I'd like. By the way, I, you know what? If I had my druthers, what I'd do? I'd pour my life into missions. If God will ever let me just go pour my life into missions, that's what I want to do. But God wants me to pastor, and I'm fine with that. But I want to go help missionaries. I want to, want to be, be a blessing, and they're such a blessing to us. And, 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 and I would like to do all those things, but I can't focus on just missions. Because I got seniors and I got children and I got middle aged and I got young families and I got the couples class and I got the. By the way, some of y'all were not in the couples class this morning and I'm not happy with you one bit. <laughs> and you know exactly where I'm talking about. Lynn, talk to them children. But uh, say, preacher, what do you do? I run around and check this one and check that one and check this one, check that one, check this one, check that one. Why? Because that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't sit around and just wait for y'all to come up. We have to lead. We have to get out in front of things. Some of y'all, Paul, Paul is in the building. Paul, we, we've talked for four or five years about growth problems. And some of y'all, I don't know why we're talking about growth problems. We put a hundred and something chairs in here, extra, 130, I believe. I see probably 40 of them empty right now. I'm telling you, I can't look at where we are. I have to look at two, three years where we're going. Because if I, if I get two or three years where we're going and we're not ready, it's going to be two or three more years before we get called up to move. And then by then we drop. We did a thing the other day. We, we counted 50 people that are not part of our church this year that were part of our church last year. We have to grow by 50 just to maintain our current levels. Because of attrition, people moving away, nursing home claims a lot of our folks, their seniors can't get out anymore. We have to grow just to remain the same. 
And you thought we'd just come in here on Sunday and read a verse and holler. Somebody's got to lead. We found out the hard way when there's no pastor what happens to a church. All of a sudden you get little factions. And this group and that group. And say, preacher, what's the job of the preacher? To keep all the factions loving Jesus and loving each other. Because see, the nursery thinks they're the most important ministry here. And by the way, they are. And the bus people think they're the most important. And the choir always thinks they're the most important. Music people hard to deal with. And the choir. And uh, I mean, everybody's got everything. And the pastor got to say, hey, listen, you are important and you are important. But everybody's important in their place. And let's, let's run together, not against each other. We're not in competition. We're in completion with each other. Pastor's job is to lead the local church. Number three, verse number three, the pastor's job is to mentor the people of God. So we lead the church of God. We preach the word of God. Verse number three, neither being lords over God's heritage, but being examples. I'm teaching the young men. And by the way, if you're in my class tomorrow morning, your test is very difficult. Just if you're in my class tomorrow morning, you should cry. But I, I'm, I've just spent a week uh, teaching last week. We taught 16 qualifications of a pastor. 16 qualifications. And I said, well, here's what this one means, and here's what this one means, and here's what this one means. And, you know, it's interesting today, uh, we, we, we don't think that that's important anymore. Not that a pastor's perfect, and God knows you're looking at a very flawed individual. Don't say amen, Eric. You're looking at a very flawed individual. But, you know, you ought to be able to look at your pastor and say, his faith is worth emulating. His work ethic is worth emulating. His family is worth emulating. That's why there's rules in there about your family being in subjection. That's why there's rules in there about being, you know, one of my favorite ones, and, and this is one we, all, we often overlook. You know there's a qualification in there that says that a pastor is to be a lover of good men. Did you know that? I walked in this morning, and uh, Jacob and Scott were back there where Scott's sitting right now, and I, I threw my arms around Scott, most of the way around Scott. Man, just inside of my heart, just filled up. I, I have such a love for, for the sacrifice his family makes to be part of this church. And then I look around and say, man, appreciate. There are things in that book that tell us what to look for in a pastor. The preacher, does that scare you? More than you'll ever know. We've talked about it often about our family. What would happen if our family, listen, I can always get another church. I can't get another family. And so I've got to be careful. My wife and my kids and our finances and, 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 and my, my, my personal life and, and all these 16. And then there's another list in Titus and, and he repeats them all and he changes some of the wording so that he makes it clearer. And then he says, and by the way, just don't have anything that the devil could get hold of. Well, that's a little bit vague, don't you think? I mean, that's just kind of throwing that one out there. We're going to name my son Hudson. We thought about Jackson. Jack, we were going to name him Jackson Lee because of Thomas Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee. Bless God. <laughs> He's a little Yankee baby, but he was going to get a southern name, I promise. We were going to name him Robert, uh, Tom, Thomas Stonewall Jackson, Robert Ely. That's a long name, but couldn't get on the verse to it. We we're going to name him Jackson Lee. But then we got to thinking about it, and, and my son, the quarterback for Georgia, named Hudson. And uh, my son said, let's name him Hudson. I said, yeah, let's name him Hudson. It had nothing to do with a quarterback from Georgia. The man that poured his life into my dad. The man whose son poured his life into me. Say, so was Tony perfect? Tony's not perfect to this day. In fact, Tony's a train wreck. But oh God, how I love him. Oh God, how I loved his daddy. And I want my little boy to know that when he gets old enough to understand, you were named after the preacher that changed our family's life. That God used in such a way that we will never be the same. Hey, preacher is not perfect, but he ought to be striving to be an example. Y'all wonder why I let them kids come in my office and get candy. Every Sunday, y'all see them kids go in my office. 
want your kids. There's so many bitter kids. There's so many kids that hate church and hate God. And they, they, they just talk bad about their pastor and they talk bad about their childhood. Man, when, when your kids get old, whatever else happens to them, I want them to remember these days. <laughs> I want them to remember going to get candy in the preacher's office and the preacher hugging them and loving them and being a part of their life. I want those kids. You say, preacher, you're just, you're just vain. Oh, God, you miss it. I'm so scared to death. Your kids are so precious and my kids are so precious. And I just sent one off, so I'm knowing what you're feeling now. And I want them to know that their preacher loved God and loved them and had such hopes for them and wants them to do something great for God. And I, I know I'm a mess and I know I'm not perfect, but I'm telling you, I live with the thought that your kids are watching me. And that's why it's important your kids come. And that's why it's important they get hold of a Sunday school teacher and they get hold of some faithful men in this church and some faithful women in the church, especially you that are single moms and you that are single dads. You need to give them those mentors and examples. And, and, and I, I'm not perfect, and I wish you could have had Brother Hudson as a pastor, but I'm telling you this, I want you to understand my role as a mentor to you and your children is one that I take very seriously. And I want them to know that God loves them and God has a plan for them and a purpose for their life. To mentor the people of God, to lead the church of God, to preach the word of God. And then lastly this morning, and I guess we'll, we'll just stop here because there's just no way. But uh, we see the cornerstone of the church, the caretaker of the church. And then in Acts 6, I already mentioned it earlier, we find the caregivers of the church. In those days, the number of disciples was multiplied. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily administration. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples with them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. There's arguments of whether or not this is the deacon or not. I tend to believe that it is the deacon. I also tend to believe it is the assistant pastor. It is those that come alongside the pastor to help with the work of the ministry. It's those that realize there's so much hurt. There's so much need. They say, you find seven men full of hosts. We had a church in Michigan that had a rule you had to have seven deacons and then, by the way there's scriptural qualifications for the deacon I'm not going to preach that this morning but there's just as there's for the pastor there's for the deacon deacons wives actually as well but I had a church in Michigan that had a rule you had to have seven deacons now we only ran about 70 people we couldn't find seven deacons because they had to be full of the Holy Ghost they had to meet the qualifications our church is blessed we've got Jim Morton. I pick on him unmercifully, but you know, Warren, in spite of all I say about him, is a good man. David Hall, Brother Pratt. Got older men that don't function as deacons anymore just because of age. Good men. Good men. We've got great. Sunday school teachers. We've got wonderful assistants. The church is growing to the place that I can't be at everybody's hospital and everybody's nursing home and everybody's bedside. I promise you, if we just went and saw the people that needed us to come in for a visit just to say we love you, the Larry's of the world. Been in that nursing home for months and months and months and, and I got over the other day and praise the Lord for that, but I thank Lord for people like George and Gail, they go every week of the world. Every week of the world, they go check on you. Caregivers, why? Do you know that everybody sitting around you has got a burden? Everybody you know has got a burden. Preacher, what do you do? i got to preach. You know how hard it is to get sermons and, and just get ready and preach and all the overseeing and all that? Oh, by the way, preacher, you got to go visit. Oh, yeah, no, okay, okay. Isn't it a blessing when I walk in the room and say, oh, Brother Stansel, so-and-so just left. Oh, I can't get over there, but so-and-so's coming. This is God's plan, the local church. Christ, the head. The pastor, the caretaker. The caregivers. 
deacons, yes. Assistant pastors, yes. Sunday school teachers, absolutely. But it's also you. It's you. The preacher, I'm not a deacon. I don't have a job. Who told you that lie? Did you call anybody this week and make sure they're doing good? Did you take a meal to anybody this week? Did you let somebody know you're praying for them? It's amazing to me. And I'm the pastor, so I kind of expect stuff. But I get cards, preacher, praying for you. Love you. Thank you for what you do. Have you sent those cards to the folks next to you in your Sunday school class? The preacher, we got to improve on the local church. It's just not working. You know what our problem is? God gave us a perfect plan, and we tried to improve it. God gave us a perfect structure, and we tried to make a committee out of it. God save us from fixing what God established. God's first, Christ, pastor, lead, and then the people. We just meet needs, win souls, help people. Train, disciple, love. We were figuring it out the other day. We're trying to, I was, I was in the office and Lisa was in there. And uh, I can't think of who else was in there right at the time. But, oh, Sue was in there. Lisa and Sue were in there. And they were mapping out their routes. They said, you know, if I, if I took this part and they took this part, well, we could reach more kids. And we could move this around, move that. Man. Go in that nursery, there's four or five women praying I get done soon but they're in there they're loving those kids starting early letting them know my wife keeps the nursery every Wednesday night and, and those kids Miss Valerie everybody doing a part pastor what's your job man I got to get in this book I got to pray I got to beg God God how are we going to keep growing okay if we are we going to start a new church maybe it's time what are we going to do what are we going to do? I got finances missions all this here's this report here's that report here's this and here's it Sunday school's up Sunday school's down we're growing we're shrinking well all the time I got to keep that all moving and you got to meet needs love people help people disciple people encourage people witness to people say preacher what if I do my job and you do your job I'm positive he's going to do his job. Christ said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men to me. If I do my part and you do your part, he's guaranteed to do his part. I'll come back next week. and that, Actually, that was really just the introduction. I'm sorry. <laughs> next week is the message. We're actually going to get to Acts 2 next week. The people of the church. The people of the church. Who God places in this local. He said, Preacher, what about Calvary Chapel? God bless them. What about First Baptist? Wonderful. What about so and so? Great. But truth is, I could care less. I love them, want them to do well. God bless you, win souls. But this, you, this place, these people, this is what I live for. Because this is what God wants me to pastor. This place, I don't know if you got it or not, kind of an important deal. Kind of a big deal in God's economy. This is, what, this is what he's chosen to make a difference in Pinellas County in our part of it. Well, preacher, I can't believe so and so. Why are you worried about them? We got enough to worry about right here. Well, did you hear what they're doing in Connecticut? Who, who cares about Connecticut? What are we doing right here? Let me ask you this question. I'm done. What are you doing today what are, you, what are you doing today what have you done to encourage to edify to build up to evangelize all right so today's not been a great day so far what about tomorrow how are you going to live your life to make a difference well preacher we pay you I got to study I got to prepare I can't go all over Pinellas County like y'all will you've got to make a difference you've got to make a difference Father, I pray as we open this series on the local church. Lord, we realize this is your church, a big deal to you. And Lord, you've got a plan, a purpose. You brought me here. You brought our staff here. You brought our deacons here. And you brought every person here. Lord, I was listening as Rebecca was explaining to me the other day how many people attend our church but are not part of our church. Lord, so many people that need to make a difference. Lord God, I pray that as we we look through this series that we'd see that, Lord, 
It's not a movement. It's not a denomination. It's not a group. It's an individual local church with pastors and people that make the most difference in the lives of a community. God, you don't bless movements per se. You bless men and churches. And maybe those lead to movements. We understand that. But God, it all starts with the blessings on a pastor and a people. Heads are eyes are closed. Maybe you're here today and you've never trusted Christ as Savior. You have no idea what it means to be a Christian. If you were to die today, you do not know for sure you'd go to heaven. I didn't preach on salvation this morning, but the truth is, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You'll not get into heaven for any way at all other than you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who died for you, was buried and rose again. If you're here this morning, you say, Brother Stancil, if I die today, I do not know for sure that I would go to heaven. I do not know for sure that I would go to heaven. Would you please pray for me? Nobody's going to embarrass you, call you down in any way, hurt you at all. But you say, preacher, would you pray for me? Let me do that and pray for you. Would you slip your hand up anywhere in the building, front to back, left to right, all over? God bless you, sweetie. I see that. You can put your hand down. Would there be another say, preacher, pray for me. If I were to die, I don't know for sure I'd go to heaven. Nobody's ever taken the gospel and explained it to me about how to go to heaven when I die, but I'd like to. Anybody else like that? Here's the bad news. You're a sinner, and all of us know that. For the wages of sin, you've earned death. We've all come short of God's perfect glory. But God in His love, He committed, He demonstrated that love toward us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died on the cross for us. He was buried and rose again. The Bible says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. If you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, if I died, I don't know for sure I'd go to heaven. Recognize you're a sinner. Realize that Christ died on the cross for you was buried for you and rose again for you personally for your sin and receive him into your heart by asking him, Lord, save me a sinner. If you'd like somebody to help you with that and explain that much more thoroughly from the Bible, my wife is available. Others are here. Men are here for men. Ladies for, la for ladies. We'll open the Bible and show you everything the Bible says about what it means to be saved, to go to heaven when you die. If you'll meet me here at the front during our time of invitation, I'd be happy to show you what that means you're here this morning you say preacher I'm saved but I've not been baptized I've not followed the Lord in believers baptism I'm not part of a local church or I'm saved baptized part of this local church but preacher there's some things in my life the Lord wants me to correct about my part of the local church we're going to stand to our feet heads are about eyes are closed Rebecca begins to play I'm going to step down to the front as you're standing if you raise your hand or you need to come, the altar is going to be open. Jonathan's going to lead us in a verse or two of an invitation song. The local church is God's perfect plan. Why do we mess up what God started, what God provided? If you raise your hand, I'll be at the front. Others have come. Jonathan begins to sing. Why don't you step out? Why don't you come? I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. You need to come. You need to step out. You come. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him. More verse, you step out of your place, you come. Him. You need to join the church, be baptized, make other decisions. Folks are here to help. Jonathan he will sing. give me grace and he will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. And go 
with me, with me all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him all. All right, look up this way. We'll have our ushers come. We want to receive our offering. This is our time of worship and giving. If you're a member, regular attender here of community, be faithful in your giving. And we praise the Lord. Uh, last week was a little thin. And uh, the Lord provided during the week a special midweek gift someone sent in. And uh, so that helped us, praise the Lord, uh, be faithful in our giving. Don't forget our missionaries. We've got a great missionary of the week, Miss Margaret Stringer, our missionary of the week. We love her. Thank the Lord for her. And uh, we've got our missionary coming up, Brother Dwayne Harrison, uh, with a great weekend, a mission emphasis weekend. Looking forward to that. So don't forget your missionaries. Don't forget your regular giving. And uh, just so you know, things like buses uh, cost a little bit of money. We had to replace... Uh, we're in the middle of replacing a radiator and uh, some other things. So there's always maintenance, always stuff going on. And uh, just be faithful, be faithful so that the work of God can go out of this place, not only in Pinellas County, but around the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. Start right here at home and spread all the way around as far to Mississippi. Amen. And uh, so God bless you as you give. Father, bless the gift and the giver. May we be faithful in that. And you're always faithful in your blessing. Thank you for the good day now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you as you give. I don't know if it's supposed to do that, Miss Marty, but that song made me dizzy. I felt like I was spinning in circles there. But that was, that was beautiful, very beautiful. Uh, this uh, October the 24th, uh, the young adult group will be going to see Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella over in Tampa. And the tickets are $65 a piece. That money is due today, so please get that in today. And then uh, looking forward to visitation this week. This past week, we were able to go and uh, pass out flyers in a couple of apartment complexes uh, for Brother John and Miss Stephanie's route. And uh, I think they had, where's John at, 21, or we had 21 total 
uh, first time visitors this week in 226, and that was just awesome. And uh, we're going to be going out this week and visiting Miss Sue's route, and we're excited about that. So if you don't do anything on Tuesday night, meet us up here at 630, and we take a bus out and go uh, just hand out flyers. Looking forward to that. This week in 226 is Silly Shoe Night. So just get you a pair of shoes and draw on them or something. Put different color shoestrings, and uh, we'll have a good time there. We're looking for a few more 226 workers with the new kids and growing. Uh, there's always need for helpers, so if you don't serve uh, right now on Wednesday night, that's something you might be interested in. Come and see me. Just as simple as maybe standing at a bathroom and, and letting the kids go in and making sure that they eventually come out. And uh, that would be a blessing, too. So come see me if you're interested in that. If you serve in 226 immediately following the service, we'll be having a, a brief meeting right here in this wing. So immediately after the service, if you work in 226, please be in there. Tyler? All right. A couple quick things. Don't forget, this month is 100% month. So hopefully your Sunday school teachers have been... Uh, bugging you all week about making sure you're in your place on Sunday mornings for Sunday school. Uh, remember, the, the classes that win get a huge surprise. We get a huge dinner uh, on a Sunday afternoon. We're going to have a, uh, dinners for winners is what we call it. Uh, then we also have our teen bonfire activity is this uh, Friday evening at 630. If you meet here at the church, $5 a piece. Uh, we're going to have, it's going to be about a two and a half hour activity. Uh, for those of you that are interested in that, if you have any teenagers that uh, are you are friends with, if you want to bring them, it would be great to have them there. Then that following morning, uh, Saturday morning at 1030, October 11th, we're having teen outreach. Uh, so make sure your kids are here for that. You go out and pass out flyers and things like that. Then also, uh, we have scripture calendars for sale. The 2015 scripture calendars, these beautiful calendars with uh, landscape pictures and uh, uh, scripture verses and things like that out for sale out in the lobby. If you have any questions about that, uh, look at the information booth or see Brother Warren Chase uh, for anything else about that. Pastor Paul. It's so funny because Pastor Paul just said he has to give announcements last because if he doesn't, his group will forget the announcements. And I was laughing at him, and then I forgot two of my announcements, so that's what I get. Uh, next Sunday, the young adult group will be eating lunch after the morning service over at Miss Jane Kelly's house. So if you can let Alina or myself know if you'll be able to make it to that. And then the Community Crusher softball team, if we don't get rained out tomorrow, we're playing at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow night, if you are on the team, please be there at 7.30. Thank you, Paul. I have several things to announce, but before I do, I want to comment on Jonathan's announcements. <laughs> before his girlfriend came to town, they did things like hockey games, and uh, they went canoeing, and now they're going to see Cinderella. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, Pastor Stan will announce most of my stuff already today. Um, 9.30, Chick-fil-A Breakfast Club coming up. And uh, Chick-fil-A has brand new coffee. I, I like their uh, iced coffee. It's wonderful. Um, but I really would like encourage you to come out to this. Um, this. This past time was really cool. We had a big group there. And I literally stood up in the middle of the restaurant and began to read verses like this. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Abide in me and be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And there's people sitting all around us, and they're listening. Nobody's ever said a word, but they're very intent, and they're listening. I want to encourage you, if you can, come out at 930 Chick-fil-A Breakfast Club. That's at the Tyrone Chick-fil-A, and we'd love to have you. Also, 630 Tuesday night, we were so encouraged. Great group that came out this past week. And uh, we had groups that were doing all kinds of stuff. I think a lot of times you're worried about, well, I don't know what I would be doing. There's a lot of things you can do at 6.30 visitation. Uh, we had many who are homebound. We go visit them. Uh, some that are in the hospital, some that just need encouragement. Um, we had some that went bus calling. We had some that came and just knocked on doors or just left flyers at doors. So I really would like you to uh, come out on Tuesday night at 6.30. I'm praying that we'll have 50 people, 50 people. Now look around you. Do you think there's 50 people in this room? If you're available Tuesday at 6.30, I hope you'll come. Also this, this month, uh, our 55 and up group are going to be going over to Hope Children's Home. If you've never been to Hope Children's Home, uh, I encourage you to sign up for this. There's a sign-up sheet on the back, and this is just a great home that does a lot of good. And then there's also a new, uh, new Journeys Lunch with a uh, pastor that's coming up on October 19th. If you've lost a spouse, a pastor would like to provide a meal for you, and it's right after the Sunday morning service. If you'd sign up for that in the back, we would love to have you that day. 
we want to help. Uh, part of our job is our widows and our widowers, and so we're going to have a time of fellowship with you, just to love on you, so sign up for that. If you're a member, we love you. If you're a guest, got a gift for you. So you'll meet me uh, right here. We have something to give you. What are you doing? You forgot an announcement? Okay, when all your men in the back are doing this, <laughs> you're like, I don't know what you want me to say. I'm sorry. We're, we're missing a, a set of keys. If you found a set of keys that don't belong to you, turn those into us. Is that good enough? Thank you. All right, very good. All right, uh, but if you're a guest this morning, if you'll come and meet me at the front, I have a gift for you. Other than that, tonight, 6 o'clock, we'll be in Ephesians chapter 4 again, and I look forward to it. Let's all stand together. Rebecca, play us out of here. All our guests, come meet me at the front. I have a gift for you. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>